Well, hello. Welcome to the Artemis Defense Institute. My name is Stephen Lieberman, and today we're going to be talking about iPro. Now, <clears throat> the um, before we begin, as with all of our videos, we always go over the four safety rules. We want this to be completely ingrained into your way of life, okay? We are going to, number one, treat all guns as though they are always loaded. We are never going to let the muzzle cover or point at anything that we're not prepared to destroy. We're going to keep our finger off the trigger unless our sights are on target and we've made the decision to shoot, and we're going to know our target and its environment. Now, that being said, we also have to take certain safety precautions to ensure that nothing potentially can injure us when we're out training or recreating with our firearms. Now, all ranges are going to have established rules that, take, that, that sort of govern your behavior when you're at their facility. The number one rule that virtually every single range has is that when you are on the firing line, or candidly anywhere around the firing line, you're wearing some form of eye protection. This isn't just a rule to limit their own liability. This is just good common sense, okay? Whenever you're in an environment where things are flying around and potential ricochets could exist, you always want to have some sort of eye protection. Now, there are a ton of different products that are available out there on the market, and you can spend a boatload of money on eye protection. It's not necessary to be quite candid with you. Nine times out of ten, if I'm dressed the way I am and I'm shooting, and yes, sometimes I do dress the way I am right now and go shooting. But if I am, I'm just going to be simply wearing these incredibly attractive Italian sunglasses. Honestly, for one reason and one reason only, I look spectacular in them. Now, <clears throat> if it's one of those days where I'm all tacked out and I'm, um, you know, trying to look as cool and operator-like as I possibly can, I'm going to typically wear these 511 sunglasses. Now, there's a reason why these glasses are actually a little bit more superior to these. These don't really protect anywhere along the sides of my face, okay? Remember, the purpose of wearing glasses is not necessarily just to simply, you know, shade your eyes from the sunlight. The real purpose is to protect any sort of projectile from getting into that ocular cavity. Well, the nice thing about these sunglasses is that they do wrap around, minimizing the possibility that something's going to enter from the side. My wife actually has a pair of these, which are really, really cool. Now, these particular sunglasses are not just simply sunglasses, they're bifocals. And for people of our age, this actually provides a real serious benefit. The I'll try to see if I can bring them up. The top part of the glass right there, you can kind of see that line across the top. That's actually a degree of magnification. Now, most of us are used to bifocals having the reading glass portion towards the bottom. This would necessitate us leaning back as we shoot, trying to stay focused on our front sight. By having the magnification at the top, we can look down just like we would if we were shooting normally, focus on our front sight, and be able to engage our targets. These are a little bit more expensive and are available at most reputable gun ranges. A simple Google search is going to show you a wide variety of sunglasses. I tend to gravitate towards 511 products. Um, we know 511 very well, and I, I think their products are extremely well made. That's one of the reasons why, you know, if I'm doing my Uber Tactical, I'll probably wear my, uh, my 511 glasses. That being said, you get what you can afford, but no matter what you do, ensure that you do have some form of eye protection on at all times. Again, I want you to train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.